Oh, I am happy in my heart. He's given me a brand new start. Pain and tears have brought me to my knees. But then a light came in my life. I said goodbye to all my strife. Because I found that Jesus really frees. Oh, I am happy in my heart. I am happy in my soul. With Jesus in my life, I've been made whole. And I will live to praise the Lord because he's faithful to his word. I'm happy in my heart now that I'm free. Oh, I am happy in my heart. I am happy in my soul. With Jesus in my life, I've been made whole. And I will live to praise the Lord because he's faithful to his word. I'm happy in my heart now that I'm free. I'm happy in my heart now that I'm free. I'm happy in my heart now that I'm free. Welcome to our online service. I'm Augustine. I'm on staff here at St. James Emmanuel Disbury in South Manchester. Last weekend was very special, and I want to thank everyone for their prayers for Catherine and Lex and me on our ordinations. We are all truly thankful for being able to serve this loving and inclusive faith community. A few weeks ago, we shared our vision for Church for Everyone. It's an initiative that began here at St. James Emmanuel. And we hope many other churches will join us and contribute stories that show God's love at work. You can find out more on Church for Everyone website. And one of the streams you can explore is on Asylum, which features the story of our Farsi community here at St. James and Emmanuel. The group has grown significantly over the last few years, and we are thrilled to have some of our Farsi and Kurdish friends taking part in today's service. Let's pray before we worship in song. Lord Jesus Christ, your name is above every other name. We praise you. We pray that your name is blessed now and forever, in good times and in bad, from east to west. Your name is worthy of praise. Your name is so powerful. Amen. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away, Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises, Hosanna. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all. Come have your way among us We welcome you here 
is when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. A few days ago, Jenny, our Farsi group leader, interviewed Hiwa. Not all members of the group speak Farsi or are from Iran. Hiwa has come from Iraq and is Kurdish, but the group is strong, supportive, and faithful, regardless of their country of birth. Hiwa has sought asylum because it was not safe for him to stay in Iraq. Jenny interviewed him on his mobile phone. And mobiles are a godsend for the whole group, and asked him to share a little of his experience of being in the UK. I do try my best to speak English very well. My name is Hiwa. I've been in this country uh, to, since 2018, July. Yeah, I get a house uh, and get an interview, go into court again, and then the both of them on interview, and then court as well they give me a refuse and then after that I've been homeless for a few months someone support me someone is trying to help me and then after that straight away I don't know really what day exactly I'm, I'm coming to the church but uh, probably like two and a, more than two and a half years I've been to the church every week and then uh, and also I, I will always feeling fresh feeling happy when I'm when I'm coming to the church. Well, that's lovely, that's lovely. But Iraq is a Muslim country, so um, what brought you to Emmanuel Church? Well, I know it's Iraq is a Muslim country, but my family is still Muslim. Uh, when I was there, I still Muslim, but when I am come here, I feel in like, I feel in different person. I want to try and do, do, do something. Uh, even when I was there, I go to the uh, church, but I'm not going to inside the church. I just see from outside, I'm going with my friends. And then when I'm coming here, straight away, I know one of Kurdish friends, one of my Kurdish friends, he's living in the circle house as well, the, the immigration house. And then he finds someone in the same house. Uh, I think his name is Hassan, he's from Iran, he's Farsi. He said, I can take you to the Emmanuel chain in Manchester. I said, okay, that will be happy because I'm really looking for somewhere to go. And then he take me to that chair. I appreciate him. He's taking me there. And then I was so happy now. How did you find Jesus? I've got a lot of friends from here. They, they Christianity, they Kurdish from Surani, Kurdish from Iran. Everyone telling me, you can change your religion to the Christianity, you feeling fresh, you feeling better. They give you a better life, they give you a happy life, happiness, like everything's coming true things. That's why I'm thinking, yeah, of course, that's what I needed, to be honest. I needed something like that. Okay, so what, what changed in your life then when, when you came to Jesus? I changed everything in my life. I feel like right now I feel in like different person. Everything's coming for me true. Everything's making me happy. Everything's different for me. Make me happy. The, the, the happiness coming to me always. 
that's that's wonderful. And do you pray? Does it make a difference to your prayers? Yeah, when I'm coming to the church, everyone pray with the English language. I do myself the Kurdish one. I do my language. The Iranian one doing the Farsi, English one they do English. I do myself. What about the Bible? Does the Bible mean much to you? I've got a Kurdish Bible in my house. Uh, this Sunday I can bring for you the Kurdish Bible, a big of like that much bigger. <laughs> uh, I read it. Yeah, I read it uh, twice a week. Sometimes three times a week, the night time, breathe, uh, make you feel impressed and sleep. That's I really fun. like it. And what would you say to somebody who wasn't a Christian? Like Jesus said, come to me, I give you better life. I make you happy. I will tell them, go forward, go, go, to, go follow to Jesus. Appreciate everyone in this church, Iman, you're <laughs> the best church I've ever. Jenny, you, um, Colin, Nick. Everyone, everyone. I appreciate everyone. I love everyone. I see you Sunday. We'll see you. We'll see you Sunday. Great. Thank you. Such joy at being a part of a church community is really humbling. And you will be pleased to know that thanks to Colin, who started the Farsi group, and our rector Nick, he will has now been given leave to remain in the UK. Hallelujah. Today's reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke and is very appropriate talking about inclusion, exclusion, and being a good neighbor. The Gospel will be read to us first in English by Diana and then in Varsi by Vahid. It will be followed by reflection from Varnum R. Farsi community and newly ordained Catherine. Today's reading is taken from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37, and is the parable of the Good Samaritan. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbour as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbour? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while travelling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord. Luke 10, verse 25 to 37. One of the people who came to him asked him to ask him this ایسا را بیازماید ای استاد چه کنم تا وارث حیات جاویدان شوم ایسا در جواب گفت در تورات چه نوشته است از آن چه میفهمی پاسخ داد خداوند خدای خود را با تمامی دل و با تمامی جان و با تمامی قوت و با تمامی فکر خود محبت نما و همسایت را همچون خیشتن محبت کن ایسا گفت پاسخ درست دادی این را به جای آور که حیات خواهی داشت اما او برای تبرعه خود از عیسی پرسید ولی همسایه من چیست 
عیسی در پاسخ چنین گفت مردی از اورشلیم به عریها میرفت در راه به دست راه زنان افتاد آنها او را لخ کردند کتک زدند و نیمه جان رهایش کردند و رفتند از غذا کاهنی از همان راه میگذشت اما چون چشمش به آن مرد افتاد راه خود را کچ کرد و از سمت دیگر جاده رفت لاوی نیز از آنجا میگذشت او نیز چون به آنجا رسید و آن مرد را دید راه خود را کچ کرد و از سمت دیگر جاده رفت اما مسافری سامری چون به دانجا رسید و آن مرد را دید دلش بر حال او سوخت پس نزد او رفت و بر زخهایش شراب ریخت و روغم مالید و آنها را بست سپس او را بر الاغ خود گذاشت و به کاروان سرایی برد و از او پرستاری کرد روز بعد دو دینار به صاحب کاروان سرا داد و گفت از این مرد پرستاری کن و اگر بیش از این خرج کردی چون برگردم به تو خواهم داد حال به نظر تو کدام یک از این ستن همسایه مردی بود که به دست راهزنان افتاد پاسخ داد آنکه به او ترحم کرد عیسی به او گفت برو و تو نیز چنین کن این است کلام خدا In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen Many of us know that when we call someone good Samaritan it is a kind of compliment and encouragement for someone who has shown his forgiveness and mercy to other to others in need but many times we have not understood this narrative well we are familiar with the story but we do not understand it is essential point correctly because it seems like the great lesson that Jesus has for us is hidden in it. If we go back to the chapter 10, verse 21, Jesus says to his disciple, Father, owner of heaven and earth, I thank you that you have hidden these things from the wise and revealed them to the children. He tells his disciple, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. Because I tell you, there were many prophets and kings who want to see what you saw, but they didn't. Many commentators related this passage to social justice and that we Christians are called to help the needy and feed the poor, which is correct. Of course, these things are great, but are not true, but are not just uh, all true in this story. Some others translate the Good Samaritan as saying, we must break the boundaries and see the other side of the road, which is still not the whole truth. Some believe we should change Jericho Road so that no one passing through it will be harmed. But the truth is that truth of this narrative is about salvation. Jesus came to save everyone. He provides salvation not only for the Jewish people, but for all nations. Jesus was the one who saw the need of the man and helped him with a lavish love and compassion. Interestingly, in this narrative, we saw that a man from the Jewish scholar asked Jesus a question, the same one the rich man has asked before. What should I do to have eternal life? What we should do? what we should do. This is a fundamental question that is a kind of concern for many people. May it is a question that humanity has been looking for an answer to since the beginning. But the 
The way this assured liar Jewish asked Jesus is not just a question. He wants to test him. According to his belief, Jesus asks him, what does the law tell you? And he gives the same answer that Jesus says in Matthew 22. The entire law was summed up in two sentences. Worship your God with all your soul and all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. He gives the correct answer to Jesus, but considering himself so righteous that he looks for another solution. It is as if he has fulfilled all this law, and now he is just looking for a new definition for his neighbor. Who is my neighbor? In in the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus said that the law says to love your neighbors, but I tell you, love your enemies. In Jewish law, you should also love strangers. But we see in the Psalm 139 that David say, I consider your enemy, O Lord, my enemies, and I hate them. So the real question is, who should be loved? Does that man want to know who is his neighbor? This is where Jesus begins to answer him and tell him the story of Good Samaritan. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him and went him away, leaving him half dead. person who passed by him and does not help him, he was a priest. A priest knows that the law well and knows that he should help the helpless and knows that he should be forgiving and he knows that he should help a stranger because all these are contained in the law given to him. But that priest even changed his way and completely ignores him. 
Therefore, we can give zero to that priest's love and sense of sympathy and help. If that is the case, according to law, he had no love for God either. Because if he loved God, he would have followed his commandments. You know, many commentators give many reasons why this priest did not go to the man and help him. Today, today to justify ourselves, we give many reasons why we did not help others. In the continuing of the story, Jesus says that, that a Levite also passed by but he also does the same work as a priest. Another religious man disobeys God's law. But after these two people, a surprising things happen. A Samaritan who was passing by saw this man. The same Samaritan who had been rejected, who had been unclean, people in their Jews' eyes. Those who were not allowed to go to the temple, were not allowed to offer sacrifice, and no one approached them. This man did the right things and shows the same love that the law and Jesus ask everyone to do. He loved that helpless man as himself. When he saw the man, he kneeled next to him, rubbed his wound and oiled them, bondaged them, put, put him on his animal and took him in a safe place. He provided the man with everything he needed. He made sure he was be okay. This is an excellent example of how we can love our enemy. He paid for his accommodation and his need for almost two months. This was the lavish love. He even said that if you spend more than this, I will pay when I return. What a, what a lovely and true love. My question for you and me today is this. Have we loved our God with all our hearts and minds and souls? Have we loved our neighbor like this? Sometimes we think that by giving a meal to a needy, we have loved our neighbors as ourselves. If we, if we think we can be justified by doing this, we have not understood this narration's main meaning. Giving food to the needy is a good thing, but is not the meaning of this narration. So who can do this? who can love his God with all his heart and soul and love his neighbor as himself? My question is, nobody, no one, neither you nor I, nor everyone else can do this. Can we have love without boundaries? Maybe we can love our partners and our children like this. Maybe. But can we love everyone like this? Jesus taught us a great lesson. Don't ask, who is my neighbor? Instead, ask yourself, am I a neighbor? Thank you, Catherine, for sharing that with us. And I hope you enjoyed the song in the middle, written by Farah and performed by her and her friends. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the many nations 
represented in our church community. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are continuing to grow us to be multicultural, intergenerational, vibrant, and inclusive. And Lord, I pray for all those refugees still waiting to have their leave to remain here. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would give them comfort as they wait. And Lord, I pray for all of us who are here, who have all their papers and everything to be here, God. I pray that we would be supportive and help as much as we can to be good neighbors to our friends and our family in Christ. Lord, we pray for our world. We pray for the climate that is happening and the dangerous temperatures around the world. We pray, Lord Jesus, that we would be people of peace through the wars and climate and everything happening. And Lord, a little closer to home, we pray for our government through this transition of leadership. We pray, Lord, that whoever you pick to choose to lead this country, that they would be humble servants looking after all of us in Jesus' name. And God, finally, I pray for our parish, all the people who are online and all the people who sit on all the different seats around our parish. Lord, we pray that they would be imbued by the Holy Spirit. They would feel loved and cared for. And even in the depths of the sorrow of life, God, you would be there. And we would be a community, a church community, looking after them and worshiping you alone. Amen. Let's conclude our intercessions with the Lord's Prayer. I'll lead it first in English, and then it will be followed by Layla leading in Farsi. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Ey peder ma ke dar asmani, naam tu muqaddas bad, پادشاهی تو بیاید و اراده تو آنچنان که در آسمان در حال انجام شدن است بر روی زمین به انجام رسد نان روزانه ما را امروز به ما عطا فرما قرضهای ما را ببخش چنانچه ما نیز قرضداران خود را میبخشیم ما را در بوته آزمایش قرار مده بلکه از آن شریر رهایی مانده زیرا که پادشاهی قدرت و جلال تا ابد الاباد از آن توست آمین Thank you, Layla. As COVID-19 infections are rising in the UK, we understand that this can be very worrying for people. Therefore, if you want prayer, please don't hesitate to contact me on my email below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the E! News to keep up to date with everything happening at St. James and Manu. You are the vine, we are the branches keep us abiding in you you are the vine we are the branches keep us abiding in you and we'll go
It's been a real joy to have some of our Farsi and Kurdish friends being a part of the service today. I hope you have enjoyed worshiping with us. Let us finish with a blessing. The God who knows our every thought and knows our every worry and our every blessing. To the son that has died for us and risen for us. And to the spirit who continues to be with us all the days of our life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with us now and everyone who we love. Amen. Now go be the church. <laughs>